The Audi Q5 that we just bought has a bit of an idle problem, so let's see if we can fix it. Off to a terrible start. How do you release? Ooh. Oh, this spark plug is loose. Ah, don't forget your nuts. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the garage. Working on the new Audi Q5 once again. And by new, I mean new to me. It's a 2018. It has a little bit of a rough idle when it first starts off. Not even like a miss. It doesn't throw any codes or anything like that. But you can just tell it, it stumbles a tiny bit. So um, opening that hood, it's pretty evident that it hasn't had any real service to the ignition coils or spark plugs probably ever has about 68,000 miles on it right now, so I figured why not? Let's get in there and see if we can change these spark plugs. I bought these off Amazon. They are the NGK, what are they, what are they? NGK Laser Platinum, those guys right there. Um, you'll see in the thumbnail here, I'll stick below, they are exact replacements for the original stamped ones that say VWAG, Volkswagen Automotive Group, but on the other side it also says NGK. So um, you can see the originals really aren't that bad, um, but I'm not confident any service has ever been done to this, so I'm going to get in there, take it apart, and see how well that goes, and uh, hopefully we'll learn something along the way. Check it out. So I haven't actually popped the hood since I bought the car. So let's see if there's anything weird under there that they obviously didn't do. Yeah, well, they definitely detailed it. Really doesn't look like they did a whole lot. Actually, I have no idea what they actually did. Nothing here looks like it's new at all. So that's nice. Or they just sprayed it down with oil and crap like that. Okay, well what we're going to do is work on some spark plugs. Alright, we are going to pop these coils off and replace those spark plugs. So looks like the first step is to get this thing to release, which I'm not quite sure how to do. Don't want to break it. Off to a terrible start. All right, got some tools here. Oh, flathead. How do you release? So it looks like this has probably never, ever, ever been surfaced. So I'm trying to figure this out as I go through here. But what I'm seeing is that there is a stud at each one of these ignition, ignition coils, as you can see right here. What you have to do is get either a really narrow, flat wrench on the lower nut, or get a vice grip or something like this. Break that nut right there, and then that allows you to pop off the wire that's on the top, and then you can actually Actually, there we go. Then you can remove the stud itself. Both of these, the stud and the nut, are 10 millimeter. I'll just go through and get all these off. Oh, good, that plug is just laying around like it doesn't matter. So let's get it out of the way for now. Here, barking dogs. Get those wires off and get the studs out now. Each one of these is theoretically loose. Huh. How the hell? I've got to get these plugs to release, and I don't know how they release. I'm sure it's something super simple, but these are extremely, extremely dirty. <sighs> okay. So I couldn't figure out these little clips. What I did figure out is you can just pop a screwdriver under the lower edge here, wiggle a little bit, and you'll hear a click, and then it'll slide off. 
So, screwdriver under the bottom side, wiggle a little bit, click. There we go, we are loose. Okay, now it's holding us in place. You should be able to just pull. That is a 16 millimeter socket. So we got our handy dandy magnet here. There we go. That is still original equipment, Volkswagen Automotive Group. It looks like it's probably never been changed, but it doesn't look terrible. Handy dandy Costco towel. There's our new one. I'm gonna slide that in ever so slowly. Don't want to just drop it in. I might even be able to get started. Also might not. Let's see if I had the correct socket, this wouldn't be an issue. If I had the correct spark plug socket, this wouldn't be an issue. But the hole's so deep, I can't actually get it in there without dropping it. So I'm gonna try. Here we go. Lowered in with that. Get our six inch extension. Maybe just ever so gentle with getting this in there. Really can't tell if that's even started correctly. It's going. Oh, there we go. Snug. Just, just enough to crush that washer a little bit. Okay, that's one successfully done, so let's keep moving here. Try not to break anything. So, unclip this wire harness right here, take this little hose guide clamp off, that should allow you to, yeah, there you go, shift the coil harness a little bit. Turn this enough to get it, get it free. My goodness. These have clearly never been out. Really stuck in there. Ooh. Huh. Well, that's not good. Oh, shit. Wow. Okay, let's move on to the last one here, see what we can do. to have some kind of blow-by on it. And these are NGKs, which is what I'm putting back in. I think I should probably buy new coils, because it seems like this has just never, ever, ever been serviced. Again, just, just snug. I don't want to keep trying and destroy this thing. If I just hold tension on it for a minute, it'll come loose. see where I tore it. Okay. Let's see how far until I actually feel as good. Oh, that's 
one's a little more snug, actually. Maybe a quarter turn. Yeah, that one needed a little more. That one's pretty snug. I already did this one, but I'll check again. Yeah, snug. Okay. Well, that's awesome. I got it off. That's extremely frustrating. So, it goes back together. Clearly there's a big gap there. I need to fix that. But for the time being, I'm actually gonna put this at the front of the engine so I can get to it easier. This one has got a lot of junk around it. Before I clamp everything, I'm gonna put the studs back in, just make sure it lines up. This was a real pain in the ass. I started, I thought this was gonna be super easy. To clarify how these go on, this goes down in the block, or in the head, through the um, ignition coil. And these little wires here go on that. You gotta hold the bottom and tighten the top. There's another nut that goes on top. These are 10 millimeter. When you're working on aluminum stuff, like most modern engines, if you can't finger tighten it, it's probably cross-threaded or something is wrong and you need to stop what you're doing. Okay. Next step, just pop the caps back on. Put the plugs. On. Make sure, they're, make sure they're all lined up before you start pushing them on. Okay. Two, three, four. Push the little red things back in. That did nothing. All right. Then put the little wires back on the studs. Ah, don't forget your nuts. And just snug that up. In. This thing was just loose laying here, but it looks like it mounts in this clip right here. That's good. That looks like it should have something holding it in place, but it doesn't. Don't forget to put this hose guide and this clamp back in place. Man. That's on. Okay. That's all good. All right. Now let's start it and see what happens. And when you do this, get all your tools out of the way. The last thing you want when you've been doing all this hard work is for a tool to fall down into the belts and just destroy things. Let's go for a quick drive and make sure nothing died. So we actually did have a bit of a stumbly idle before. I think we're good. So we'll check in after my little trip here. So that's it. We just got back. Uh, the car runs fine. It started great, very smoothly. Um, as you can see, or as you saw, uh, getting those coil boots out of the, uh, the head was not really an easy task. It's really cramped in there. The stupid little clips to get the plug off of the coil, those were a pain. That little stud with a nut on top with the grounding wire or whatever that wire is, probably a signal wire of some sort, um, that was a pain. And then getting that boot out itself was a big pain. It clearly never, ever come out. I, I tore one. Luckily, um, it was just part of the rubber, rubber boot at the top, so it didn't affect the actual assembly in any way, and it does still seal. So I'll probably replace that at some point, but the car runs fine now, it was surprising to me. Um, I, I think the problem probably was just the fact that the number, uh, was it two cylinder? Yeah, number two cylinder was just loose in there. And then you saw that on the bottom of that boot, there was just, I guess you could call it a little bit of blow by from over time. It probably sealed just fine once the engine warmed up, but it was, it was just loose enough that on initial startup, it probably was doing a couple puffs that went into that, uh, that coil chamber, the spark plug chamber there. But it appears to be fixed now. That was a lot more time consuming than I thought it was gonna be. So hopefully that little 
step-by-step -step thing there helps you out a little bit. And uh, if you're doing this yourself, hopefully it makes it a little easy for you. So uh, that's it for today. I hope that helps somebody out. And I'm probably going to have more on the Q5 coming here soon because I'm just doing general maintenance. Um, when I When I bought that, the dealership I bought it from said that they had done a bunch of maintenance. It was actually part of why we couldn't get the car right away and it took like a month for us to actually take delivery but upon opening that hood it doesn't look like it's ever been touched with the exception of the just the gross detailing black grease stuff they put all over everything to make it look fancy uh, so we'll be diving more into that here for now it appears to be great running fine so we'll keep on moving stick around for the next one thanks